e todas é, que estão aqui. Bem-vindos a mais uma sessão do Diálogo é, sobre a Cultura Oceânica. É, estamos aqui, hoje vamos falar sobre dados oceanográficos. So today we will talk about oceanographic data and we will increase a little bit the discussion to not to avoid being too much in the scientific bias. Um, Karina work in the uh, lab of marine uh, biology in Espírito Santo as, and I manage the greatest uh, database on marine uh, biology by UNESCO. I have the privilege of having Gabriel Pasqual and Mauricio Queiroz. I will let them introduce themselves and then we start our conversation. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the invitation. It's a great opportunity, such a huge event, uh, an impact in the city of Santos, a city by the sea. I'm Claudio Marcos. I'm an oceanographer. Uh, and my background is oceanography. And now I'm a, a, a company owner for 12 years already. And I hope to continue for another 12. And I have to contribute. Uh, talking on how we do data collection and how we can make this bigger, having more data collected and in a more accessible way. Good afternoon. I'm Mauricio Queiroz. I'm CEO and co-founder of a startup here in Santos, a Tagawatt, the Tagawatts. And I also thank the opportunity of being in uh, taking part of, in this event, I um, have a, a degree in physics. It's uh, it's a pre uh, physics is a pre requirement for a degree in oceanography, and our work is generating uh, energy through um, marine cur currents. So the uh, direction, the tides, and all the data that have to be filtered. We have to to uh, work with them, and that's it. O the ocean is a s uh, predictable source of energy, and uh, these data are very important for uh, specific projects and the positioning of our technology. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Mauricio. Well, I will start well talking about data. This will be actually more like a talk. Uh, we have different views here. But one of the topic that is interesting is that data usually start in a more technical, scientific uh, realms. But when we talk about the ocean decay, the need of data and information permeates all the discussions. But there is a still uh, a prejudice, a bias. Only the nerds, the geeks are the one uh, the the ones to work with database and this we still have a long way to dismystify it and we have to remember that data are transformed in information and integrate the building of knowledge so they uh, they are the basis of technical technological and scientific advances but they are here also we are here to discuss beyond academia Gabriel, would you like to comment this dismystification of data? Data, especially on, uh, in oceanography, the difficulty of data collection and the costs involved in data collection uh, in a constant way that generate, that provide quality results is not easy. And this leads to this uh, mystification, as Carolina mentioned. But it's possible. It is possible. It is. Uh, we need incentive. We need uh, goodwill. And one of the main activities is showing the benefits of having these data. How can we use this data? It is not just for uh, environmental studies or uh, science. In Hydromars, we have um, 
real-time monitoring system, which is our main product. And currently, we have the, the biggest monitoring network in the Brazilian coast. More than 100 stations from north to south of Brazil, especially in ports, where we were able to show the importance of having these data. And this mystify a little bit, as you said. So for our uh, clients, for our customers, the users, we say that the data can you be used for operational gain. So we can use ports in moments we didn't use before in a, more, in a safer way. It can be used by environment uh, in the case of an accident where does the, the spill uh, spot will migrate to. To have more activities in port areas like energy generation. So these are the major challenges. Proof that oceanographic data is important, has a value, and can be used in different ways. Mauricio, and how do you see that need of constant uh, data acquisition? What is the benefit of a uh, network ha like, like Hydromatis and others that we have as well? Perfect, this question. I, s I would say that this means uh, a richness for wealth for the country because on uh, from our standpoint which is energy production it may decrease uh, like like uh, uh, oil uh, wells we have to find the oil basins to drill the wells so if we understand how the ocean are uh, the currents are we can map and define what are the best spots that will be our, in between quotes, uh, oil wells, which is our uh, stations to use um, current movement uh, to generate energy. So this is part of a strategy. It is a national strategy uh, for energy generation. Select these uh, points, these spots, and without data, we are not assertive. We cannot define and, uh, this what these spots are. Of course, uh, energy farms cannot be uh, random. We need this study. And in our case, we have uh, it requires a constant diving in different de uh, depths up to 100 meters um, deep. We know that currents in the same geographic po point, we can have different currents, one going north or the other south in different depths. So this data, when ready, uh, serves as a basis and will be a discovery to increase uh, our energetic potential. And I'm curious to know what happens when you don't have data. So in my area, which is more biodiversity, our main need for data acquisition is to test hypotheses in, a, in addition to alarms, the mo mo part of communication. But it is very hard to understand and model ecosystems. We cannot understand if we do not have a complete database. It doesn't have to be huge, but has to provide indicators. And what about your case? Gabriel, can you explain a little bit? Well, we work a lot in this part of data collection, although it is harder and uh, costly, be uh, because we see data as basis of anything. We, st we started with hydrodynamics and uh, spread uh, scattered uh, charts, and we need these data to uh, validate the models and to see if they are behaving as reality. Sometimes we do a uh, modeling, uh, a blind modeling. So the degree of reliability is how uh, far you can go. In this case, we have to put several layers of safety in the moment of making a decision. You, uh, oh, maybe it's not so uh, reliable. So there are uh, tools and a database uh, that opened that uh, database and satellite images. But for coastline, uh, coast area where we work is not that uh, precise, not that much as in high seas. 
That's why we focus our data collection in coast areas. We see as a very important niche and Data, data have a lot of importance because of uh, the huge variations in short uh, periods of time. Interesting, Gabriel, you're talking about the coast area. And uh, this is a difficulty because it is a complex ecosystem. Of course, the deep sea is, the high seas are, but there is a, a huge uh, variety uh, of, of variables to measure. and. Uh, makes the number w w we need chaotic. So sometimes we have to define the essential variables, the minimum that we have to measure to achieve our objectives. This is one of the problems that each area has. Mauricio, what about you? How do you see that compartmentalization of data? I see as Gabriel a difficulty of data collection for some time, and this aspect of data safety for us, imagine when if you need a study, you have data about a certain current that uh, we implement uh, an energy farm there, and in one month, no longer we have the current. So we invested in the facility, in the project, and the energy source is not constant, it's seasonal, and there it is, therefore is not relevant to have a huge investment of a submarine uh, power plant at that point. So it's extremely relevant to um, acquire data. We know that only data are not enough. We have to uh, work them. They have to become functional, which is the role of the oceanographer. There are public database of oceanography, but this is not enough. So part is generating data. The other part is working with engineering so we can filter and obtain data and information. So. Uh, data are not pure information. They have to be interpreted. And this is what we have uh, major importance to generate any uh, way we have to react and to apply our solution to any other solutions for the sea. This is a very important information. And only the data are not enough to clearly uh, have to cre clearly act we need studies and in our case we need to go to the science we cannot leave scientific area there is a still this mystification and there's no way out data are sci scientific uh, matter but then oceanographer translated into clear information and more ac accessible. Ask me, I cannot read this data. I need help. I need the oceanographer to uh, obtain right information that I can use. We need that. And this data, when transformed in information, they are accessible to anyone. And other technology may, may emerge from that, from uh, that information. So these are the events of the ocean decade. Uh, this is an uh, this is an advancement. Talk about that. Uh, this discussion that is so centered in the research institutes. Showing the application and the value of that is extremely technical work. Another issue that we see quite often in uh, the observatories of marine life is the, the flow, the data flow, the management from the moment it is uh, acquired in the ocean up to it reaches the user. And in this process, we were not trained to understand the importance of standardization. 
the vocabulary used, the protocols, the good practices of data acquisition and transformation. And in the case of marine biodiversity, is it is been it is something new that we are trying to share and to uh, educate professionals of the future to help us in this process. How do you see that in the area? Uh, maybe you are more from uh, the physical area. This uh, standardization is, is important. And we are Uh, the Lab Oceano in uh, Uferj uh, that we are doing assays with technology, and we have some data, actually, more than data. These are uh, information, and they are already standardized. And of course, is it still not a specific because it is, this is a new uh, technology and it's still there is no culture. In this specific case, uh, these are available for uh, oil companies um, that prospect and drill. And these are all the more relevant data for the study of uh, rig structure, rigs or vessels or drills, we try to use this information that are, is already available. And currently, we know that this information, uh, we lack this information for our business, information about currents. There are informations like uh, uh, about uh, maritime currents and tidal currents. There are di these are different currents with different causes that have a value and uh, uh, an energy, uh, energy characteristic that is relevant to be used. And as we have this data in the Indy, they are just surface data. There's no depth uh, uh, study and temperature. So this also is a standard that does exist, but it's not available for us. We have the data. They, we work the data. We transform them in, into information. They, uh, we, we comp uh, uh, compile them. And but so far, there's no one to supply. It's good that I met Gra Gabriel. I, I want to know more about the data they have. It, it will be of extreme relevance. I believe they have uh, standardized information that will be very useful and welcome. If I can uh, go a little bit back here, we are talking maybe in an instrumental language. We talked about uh, vocabulary and technical stuff. But I'm curious to know if you in Hydromaris, Hydromaris needed to consult non-experts for any kind of relevant data. For instance, when we need to know the occurrence of some species, like invading species or economic value species, we access a traditional population or local population before starting studies. And what about you? Yes, this is common and involves a little bit of the standardization. So, and I will go to, into this point. Hydromeres has uh, a, a huge scientific basis. We always had people from universities, researchers, and we followed the university standards in dimensioning, in uh, uh, the SI, the International System of uh, Standards and Measures. And we have to adapt to our market, which is the navigation port market that already use other units, units in, instead of meters per second, they use imper imperial uh, system. And this, like knots for water uh, speed and uh, wind speed, it is different. And this standardization at, at and ex experience, it may be from port or navigation, or even fishermen. This will have an influence in the way we will standardize later on, even to make this information more accessible. So we have 
we had to change the whole international system of measures that the metric system that we used to use. But when we show it, we have to use uh, the imperial uh, system as the user do. Be them the skipper of a, uh, of a vessel or a fisherman that is working in a certain area and we have or a pilot and we need that oh what is a wave of uh, one and a half meters they are uh, used to uh, measure that by eye and feet oh it is a weak wave we have to standardize this to uh, uh, a more popular dialect sort of saying dialect so go out of the precision of science and metric system to something that is more accessible. And this is only possible if we have this contact. How do you understand the sea? How do you see that? How do you explain me the condition of the, the, the sea now? It is rough. It is uh, um, so sometimes uh, also surfers. What is a swell? Where is uh, a, a, a pig? What is a, a rough sea? What is a uh, uh, wind gust? We have to translate that f into scientific information. And this is constant. This is a challenge. And we, uh, in the information system, we have to do that. This uh, coming and going of what is a standard. So the digital systems, they uh, dialogue between themselves. We cannot forget that's the digitization, otherwise, uh, we have to produce systems that are able to um, interact with another system. They have all to be connected. And it has some peculiarities. We see, as we are here talking, and I see uh, it sounds sometimes like completely different uh, data. N and it is not good. It's uh, because uh, this is linked to people. And when we have people and culture, then we have to find a way to translate information. <coughs> In Brazil, we have a regional difference of technology and a way to look at the sea. I think I will skip to the second topic. We have two blocks for conversation. It is a kind of uh, fast uh, speed fire here, but we we say we don't like to, to talk just of scientific concepts and with non-stop of data. So the first block was the obtain, uh, the acquisition and, and process of uh, oceanographic data. And ocean is not just tide. There is a, a range of information uh, that we can obtain from the ocean. And also go back to the decade. We have now nine years ahead of a major challenge bringing the ocean for a greater discussion and solve problems. So Mauricio, I would like to know what is the main problem in this uh, ocean decades that your company want to solve, wants to solve? What, what is your solution? Well, this is exactly that. We see the ocean as a rich source of both natural resources for all the activity of blue economy, as we can say, sports, fishing. And so we focused in energy generation. And we know uh, and uh, of the potential because the ocean, we talk a lot about renewable energies. Uh, we say that we understand that uh, renewable sources are wind and sun power, but they are intermittent and seasonal. We don't have sun the whole day long. The, so there is the par part of the day. And winds, they also are not regular. So there is even an expectation, but it's still seasonal. I was recently in London representing the company in, tech, in the Tech Week. And when I was there, on the North Sea, there is a, an offshore wind uh, farm. And I saw all the, uh, the turb uh, turbines, they were stopped 
uh, turbines stop and because the wind is not available all the time. But the ocean is different. It is predictable. Currents are localized. We know where to seek them. We know what are the times. Uh, even tide is predictable with years of um, anticipation. This involves astronomy and the movements and uh, positioning of the Earth, Sun, and Moon. We have safety to predict uh, tide, or low and high tide. So this, the sea is the only source of renewable energy that offers what we call uh, energy safety. The others need a fossil fuel as a backup. So we have a solution with a technology that is new different from what we have, especially in Scotland, which are technologies based on the concept of wind energy. So we remodeled the solution to have a greater uh, efficiency and therefore solving the problem of renewable energy generation. But uh, from now on, it's safe because our source of energy is predictable and uh, the ocean exists, uh, the energy in the ocean exists 24 hours a day. And when it is a tidal energy, we know the tide timing according to the tide table. So uh, the other need uh, a fossil backup source. Brazil is one of the countries with more a generation of renewable energy um, due to the hydropower plants, but there's another, there's another problem of environmental impact. But when is the dry season, we have a drop in energy production and we have to use uh, thermal power plants. So again, fossil uh, fuel, uh, e emission of greenhouse gases, and we s uh, are still uh, uh, tied to the fossil fuels up to the future. So this is a solution that uh, doesn't have this aspect of needing a fossil backup because the ocean is constant. It's a notion of opportunities, a blue sea full of opportunities. I think that we're going to see this process grow. The decade is bringing some happiness to everybody and excitement. So. It's nice to get to know the different projects and see everything scaling more, more and more. Gabriel, what do you think is, is the main problem and how uh, Hydromaris can bring a solution to that? Yeah, I brought a list here. And it was very curious because uh, 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 of the decade and the, uh, the SDGs as well. And like I said, we always wanted to show the importance of the oceanographic data, you know. And sometimes it's hard because sometimes we ask, uh, am I presenting exactly what the population needs? And when there were the SDGs, uh, there was some happiness around it, you know, because uh, people started saying, no, oh, so we do that and we're helping in that as well. So. We felt really happy because to understand that we were providing such important data to so diff many different areas. But of course, there is the issue of um, clean energy, be it wind energy, photovoltaic, uh, or uh, you know, innovation in the infrastructure, uh, new ventures. And uh, sustainable city that is uh, uh, for 11B that talks a lot about uh, disasters and change and climate changes. I'm going to talk ab about Santos. Uh, we suffer if, uh, for here for with we suffer with a lot of a lot of swells and flood that destroy public areas and people come after data to us only after this happens so if we can predict that like the uh north sea and in chile they have like for example a forecast about tsunamis and things like that so we could have uh, measurement methods to uh, be more predictive with this regard and have more resilient cities so I think like uh, SDG 13 against uh, climate changes, because we have a long, uh, uh, um, a huge amount of data, we measure 
several, for example, summers and winters, and we can have a predictability of what is actually happening or not. So we have uh, port activities that are more efficient with less uh, uh, expenditure of fuel, you know, and in the f uh, STD 14, uh, regarding water, uh, knowing more, you can identify if there are any changes in the physical environment that can impact, you know, and can generate more studies. And what is the main challenge for you in the next uh, 10 years in the sectors that you work? Abriel, if you would like to start. The biggest challenge today is awareness. As this issue regarding interacting with the cities, you know, we'll leave a little bit of the port area where I act in a very constant and conscious way, and also use that for other, for the city, for civil defense, for the interaction of population. I think this is one of the major challenges that we need to win, to make people aware of that. And what about you? Do you agree? Yeah, to us is uh, very different. Uh, for sure, our main challenge is the regulatory issues to have a Brazilian law that allows uh, we to explore energy this way. And this has a big relevance. We are a little behind with this topic in Brazil compared to other countries that uh, have already advanced a lot in this topic and have a legislation that allows, for example, payment of taxes. Uh, so how do you treat this kind of revenue? And that, and if that can be done offshore, uh, like with the energy being taken to the continent or the energy being uh, uh, used offshore, like, for example, platform rigs, uh, rigs uh, oil rigs, so we are still behind to explore that and act with that regard. The 2022 decree 10 uh, uh, six includes some of these things, but uh, it has many gaps, still has many gaps. But it shows there's a way for us to, um, you know, request like a, a submarine prisma that we need to ask for the authorization of the Ministry of Mining and Energy. Also ask a, a request to the uh, um, aviation agency. So the fishing industry has also to approve and Obama, of course, and understand what are the jurisdictions. Like, for example, here in Santos, we have a project to generate energy in Guarujá for that uh, island uh, close to the Pernambuco Beach, that is the Arvoredos Island. To We have a project to make it the first totally sustainable island in the world, but we need some approvals from the state of Sao Paulo. So be able to get uh, an environmental license also takes a long time, so we need to speed up this process, understand the impacts, you know, collect this data and predict the impacts that a power plant can cause. Uh, because there was an impact with the, the, that removal or the addition of sand uh, at the beach in Florianopolis because of the shade. So now we have uh, uh, shark attacks more to the north. So I, we understand that this uh, environmental part needs to be considered, but with more agility and not so much cost you know, so that we can implement and maybe have the first submarine uh, plant in the world here in Brazil. 
It's funny because this uh, keeps changing because we know that in Brazil, part of the people came through the sea and we think that we have a culture that is pretty much connected to the sea and when we compare to other s countries, we see that we are a lot behind them. So um, our challenge is to work this on this conversation, making data more available so that researchers can have a sharing plan. Like for example, we cannot conduct an impact study of a plant without information on the submarine life in that place. So sometimes we don't do things not only because things can simply cannot happen because the data is not available. We have two minutes. So I'm going to try to cut it short. We have an online uh, broadcast uh, pretty soon. So we're going to continue this conversation. If you're here and you want to talk more about data in the coming days, in the coming days. Uh, so I think uh, I would like to learn from you what is the message that you want to leave for the future. We have two more minutes. If I start, you're going to run out of time. So, <laughs> and uh, I think that we need to be concerned about this topic, about the ocean. Brazil, most part of Brazil, we have 5.7 million square meters of jurisdiction in the sea. Is our blue Amazon. So it's a source of uh, endless uh, resources, financial resources as well. So we can change the life of our population if you, we pay attention at, to that. So I think that we need to dive deep into this richness and bring this to the continent and to our lives. I think that my considerations uh, are pretty much near to what you said because it's a blue ocean to be explored that we need to get to know. We need to have more knowledge about it, be it with physical contact, biological contact, of everything that we can do in the ocean. So let's try to find new alternatives in the coastal area uh, or deep in the sea, but through knowledge and doing things consciously knowing exactly what we're doing. So we need more knowledge. We need to know better our seas and our oceans. And we hope that this ocean decades finds uh, huge advancements in the future. So to wrap up, I think that we're here to make a revolution. Uh, regarding this data of, on the ocean, we have a new generation that's coming with us. Uh, because we cannot have information to solve any problems if we don't bring this sea of data and make this available and accessible to as many people as possible so that in the end we can have a more sustainable development. I would like to thank you so much for your participation. Uh, have a great afternoon and a great week. Thank you.